Hey guys, Matt here. For those of you that don't know, I live in Ningbo, China. Been here for a number of years now. Uh, my apartment building is one of these right here. And if you were to look at them from outward appearances, they're very modern, very clean, very new. Locals didn't build most of those. Migrant workers did. And although the end result is very clean, modern, and interesting, and suburban in the Western standards, the uh, migrant workers that build them are a different story all entirely. Uh, I'm taking a walk out in front of my building. There's a river here where a bunch of barges come by transporting coal and dirt and fill from different places in China to other places in China. But in this weird area zone between the buildings and the river resides the migrant worker city. The migrant workers aren't wealthy. They're here uh, working for low wages to work hard every day. And what happens here is the contractors, the builders, set up these villages, these areas where uh, migrant workers can come live for the time that they work and then go back to where they came from when they're finished. In the time that they're here though, they set up a makeshift village, a city, uh, complete with farming communities, places to wash, places to sleep, and to see two styles of living adjacent to each other is kind of an interesting thing. So all the places that they're living, whether it's larger like a group of people or like smaller like single family you would say, but it's more than single family, they really pack a lot of migrants into these areas, are all prefab. So they set them up as quick as possible, get people living in them, get people working and the building. And then as soon as the building is done, this place will be gone. It'll be a park. As a matter of fact, the whole area here along the river is gonna end up being quite a beautiful park. You can see behind me though, the uh, farms. And it looks like they're farming some vegetables, uh, maybe some fruits. And there's an area where they're growing rice that's a little bit marshier. Rice needs a little very wet area. You've seen the images of uh, rice fields, rice paddies that are in standing water. Areas like this are set up actually all over, I would say Ningbo, but really it's China, coastal China. Everywhere where things are exploding, everywhere things are building. And you might look at some of these situations and say, those poor guys, they're being manipulated by bigger powers to build these kind of areas, and that is true. But also they're being afforded opportunities that may not be available to them back home. Maybe they're farmers back home, maybe they're just grunts working very hard for almost nothing back home and this is, is actually an opportunity. Hey, we got an opportunity on coastal China to do some labor but we're getting paid a little bit and we get to send some money back home. Obviously they should be paid more for what they do, I'm sure, but I do know that they're coming here for a reason and it's, it's an opportunity even though it's not a fantastic one. To you and me, it might be a great one to them. Yeah, here's one of the barges. Full of dirt, headed somewhere. Some foundation of something. Almost every available spot of land that's not being built on is being grown on by the workers here. For example, this area here is being prepped for some sort of vegetable and uh, 
these are just piles of rubble. I mean, really, this is just a waste from the job site that they're just building on. But right here, you can see they're growing some things. Over here is prepped to grow. And there's just winding little paths through these mounds of construction dirt until you get to the end here, which is the job site. Now, this is gonna be one of the most amazing parks in Ningbo. It's gonna be called Central Park, after New York Central Park. And it goes way, way off into the distance. You see those buildings there? That's where it's gonna end. Just acres and acres and acres of uh, park. So there's your migrant workers, a little city set up, and there, there's the park that they're building. Coincidentally, this is not the only migrant village in town. There's a lot of different ones that are set up farther down strategically so that the workers that need to work a certain area are within a close distance of that. There's no two hour commute when you're a migrant worker. Well, there's a major commute to get here, but after that, they strategically put you in places so that they can uh, maximize the amount of time that these people have to work. This is a makeshift greenhouse, for example. I don't know what they plan on growing here, but I know that uh, they like to grow strawberries in greenhouses because it keeps the moisture and the heat very uh, constant. This one's just made out of a plastic bag. Another thing to note here is that it's Saturday. It's Saturday and uh, these areas are pretty empty. There's just a couple of people doing some uh, maintenance on the fields, but most everybody else is working right now. It's almost seven days a week, I would imagine. This is one of the housing complexes and it looked like it burned down. Maybe somebody was smoking a cigarette when they shouldn't have been inside. And I don't know if all of these beds were here originally to sleep in, but you can kind of see there's, there's one, two, three, four, five bunk beds. So 10 people, 10 beds. Who knows, there's probably more than one person on a bed on some of them in one little cubicle. Interesting. Another thing that you end up finding a lot of is just garbage, waste. Uh, it litters everywhere. You can't really fault them. I mean, it's not like there's a lot of refuse containers in the area. I know when they leave this little migrant village, there's gonna be quite a cleanup. Interestingly, a lot of that will become backfill. The toys, the fans, the food containers, it'll all get kind of minced together with the dirt and laid down as foundation for whatever park might be here. So yeah, outside of my really nice apartment lies a very interesting, different side of life. And I'm not trying to videotape this as a knock to the migrant worker. Their job is very important, especially here in China, to grow this country on a whole. And this is the beginning step for people to kind of climb out of whatever rut they might find themselves in as far as poverty goes. Um, migrant worker is the first step and then hopefully they put enough money to educate their kids and then slowly and surely they work their way up the, the ladder of life and their grandkids end up living in the apartments that they once worked so hard to build. Hello. 
。哇，很大的狗。它会说中国话。一点点。你叫什么名字？我叫赵马特。啊，叫马特、呃。我叫马特。你叫马特？对对对对对。他叫马特。马特，马特。给他打个招呼，发仔。哈喽。我就在这个这个地方。就是在这里啊。呃。外国朋友。嗯。So I think we all have to appreciate where we are and how we got there. I think is how I'll sum this one up. I am especially lucky that I was born an American. And uh, I grew up in suburban America. But there are people in this world that are struggling. And uh, they're working hard, just like my ancestors' ancestors did. I think uh, I traced back my family tree once, and way back in the day, my family delivered ice out of the back of a truck. They were ice delivery people, literally back breaking work. So. My great-great-grandfather lugged chunks of ice around so that I could come back to China and produce this interesting video about people who are doing their own form of lugging ice around. Hello. 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 <laughs> A lot of people have watched my vlogs and said, "Wow, it's it's very, very clean and new and and modern in Ningbo," and it is, but it didn't get here overnight. And it got here on the backs of people that worked very hard in very harsh conditions. So if you are watching this from uh, the Western world, just know that there are some migrant workers working very hard in China, appreciative of what they have, and hoping that someday they could be where you are, <laughs> or their kids' kids could. Jayo, like, subscribe, share, comment, and uh, I will see you next time.